everyone. I'm Farah and I head the sunscreen committee at the Personal Care Products Council. Welcome to our inaugural episode of Skin Smart. We believe in the future of your skin and our mission here is to empower you with knowledge, real science and expert advice that will inspire you to achieve your most healthy and beautiful skin yet. On today's show, we're going to talk about a product that packs a serious health and beauty punch, sunscreen. Yes, it's time for Sunscreen 101. There's a lot of information out there, and of course, a lot of misinformation about the effects the sun can have on us. So let's take a look at those big and little things that we can do every day to make sure that we're protected. But before I get into all of that, I am so excited to introduce two members of my Dermatological Brain Trust, Dr. Doris Day and Dr. Diane Burson. Dr. Day is a board-certified, award-winning dermatologist from New York with a long list of celebrity clients. Welcome, Doris. And we also have Dr. Diane Burson. Dr. Burson is a board-certified dermatologist as well and past president of the Women's Dermatologic Society. Welcome, Diane. Thanks for having me. Now, I want to start with practicing safe sun and talk a little bit about the fact that it's more than just wearing sunscreens. Absolutely. It's about sun smart behavior. And this means doing everything you can to help protect your skin from the harmful UV rays. This means staying in the shade when you can, especially in the midday sun, wearing sun protective clothing and hats and sunglasses and using sunscreen every day, all year round and reapplying regularly so you have adequate protection against those UV rays. Absolutely. And I think it's really important for people to know that sunscreens, when we're talking about sunscreens, that these are over-the-counter drugs, which means that they have gone through rigorous testing for safety and efficacy, um, and that anything labeled with an SPF, from a lip gloss to a spray to a lotion, Anything labeled with an SPF is, in fact, a sunscreen. Absolutely. And it's also important to note, because as a dermatologist, I see the worst sunburns on cloudy days, that even if it's cloudy outside, even if you think it's not that hot, if you don't need a flashlight to see outside, you need your sunscreen. And there are so many formulations, as you mentioned. There are creams and wipes and sprays and gels and lotions and powders. There's something for everyone. SPF and sunscreens can be very technical. How do you explain SPF and broad spectrum to your patients? SPF really stands for sun protection factor. So the way that it works is that that SPF kind of gives you a guesstimate of how long you can be out. So typically, if you would burn in 10 minutes, if you have an SPF of 15, you would do SPF 15 times the 10 minutes comes to 150, so that's about two and a half hours. So it would take you that much longer before you burn. You want a sunscreen that's labeled broad spectrum, and broad spectrum means it protects against both the UVB rays, but also the UVA rays. Now, what FDA is requiring on all products is this drug facts panel. So this panel that you see here will be required on all sunscreens. The big packaging as well as smaller little lip glosses are gonna require that labeling that says drug facts with all the information. Sunscreens have come such a long way. Gone are the days that we use these thick, white, chalky products that looked thick on your skin. Now the sunscreens are so cosmetically appealing and acceptable for patients with all skin types, whether they have skin of color, sensitive skin, uh, acne, rosacea, or oily skin, we're finding that all these formulations are really well tolerated by our patients. I totally agree, and I'm really excited about some of the newer formulations as well. You have a primer with SPF, and now there's also powders that go right on top of makeup. We have daily moisturizers, BB creams, primers like you mentioned, foundations. I really think we have enough here to do a full makeover, so that is why I invited a professional makeup artist, Kim Weber, to do an SPF makeover for us. Everyone, let's welcome Kim to the show. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me, Farah. I'm really, really excited to be here. Before the show started, I went through the audience and I actually chose somebody who I'm going to do makeup on in this chair using makeup with only SPF. So eyeshadow, lipstick, blush. We're gonna have fun. So please welcome Ayako. And she's gonna sit here for me and we're gonna make her prettier than she already is. Okay, we're gonna let Kim and Ayako do their thing and by the end of the show, we'll check out their makeover. 
But you know, we don't all have Kim or a makeup artist with us to help us apply sunscreen every day. So I'm wondering what's the best way that you know to describe to your patients how they can use sunscreen properly? I recommend that my patients wear sunscreen every day, rain or shine, to take a shot glass amount of sunscreen and apply it to all of the exposed areas of the skin, not forgetting some areas such as the lower lip, the upper ear, and the tops of the hands. Right. So now I don't want people to get the wrong idea, but I have a shot glass with me and it's not like I walk around with a shot glass, um, but I just happen to have one uh, for today's show because I really wanted a visual and I wanted people to see um, what we're talking about. So here's a shot glass and this is approximately the amount that you would need for your entire body, um, one application. And it's really important to reapply it regularly. The FDA recommends that you reapply it about every two hours. But if you're swimming, sweating, or very active, or even rubbing it off after going in the water, if you towel it off, it's important to reapply it even more often. All right, docs, let's do a little rapid fire Q&A session. Are you ready? Okay, truth or myth, vitamin D. Do sunscreens cause vitamin D deficiency? That's a myth. You really don't need sun exposure for your vitamin D. You can get plenty of vitamin D from other sources. Truth or myth, sunscreen ingredients are not safe for pregnant women or children. That's a myth. These aren't products that the FDA requires stringent testing for. So it's important to know that it's much more harmful to get the damaging UV rays, which we know are cancer causing, as opposed to using sunscreen and protecting your skin on a regular basis for you as a pregnant woman and for your children. Ultraviolet rays cause sunburns, they cause premature aging, and they cause skin cancer. The World Health Organization and the CDC all agree that ultraviolet radiation is carcinogenic. Farah, how about if we fire some questions at you? Sure, I'm ready. Sunscreens with SPF 50 or higher, are those useless? What FDA said was that sunscreens with higher SPFs are accurately labeled, but they had questions about whether they were really needed. So right now, scientists are debating the issue, further research is going on, and a dialogue with FDA. Now, ultimately, FDA will be the decision maker, and we will wait to see what they decide on the matter. What about self-tanning products that contain SPF? Is it wise to keep reapplying them? Oh, good question. I would not recommend reapplying it. I think apply once, and then after that, reapply a sunscreen without self-tanner in it to maintain that level of protection. So. I think reapplying a self-tanner would definitely be a beauty don't. But speaking of beauty do's, are we ready to check in with Kim? We are putting the finishing touches on Ayako's makeup. And we just did something really soft and pretty. She's not seen herself yet, so the reveal is going to be right now. She looks so fabulous, and I love it when beauty and skin health come together like that. I wish we had more time, but we're at the end of the show. But the good news is we're going to carry on the sunscreen conversation in our next episode of Skin Smart. Up next, we're going to talk about anti-aging and skin cancer prevention. So stay tuned, everyone. And to get more information on protecting your skin, please visit these sites.